son of a... What's going on, Tube Nation? Tony Tubes coming back at you. Today, I'm here to bring you uh, my tube review of Fantastic Four 2015, starring those fucks. I have always loved the Fantastic Four. My dad was a big Fantastic Four fan, and I remember my first Fantastic Four uh, comic book that I got. Uh, it was uh, called uh, Cowboys and Idioms, and it was it was really good. And I just I loved their chemistry. I loved you know of course I loved their superpowers, but I just loved them together. Em you know empowered by the four of them, and that that was always such a really good thing in my eyes. And um, and you know I'm one of the people that I never saw Rise of the Silver Surfer. Uh, but you know the first one, it, it, it was a god awful movie. The the Jessica Alba one, with the exception of Jessica Alba, I'd give it three out of five thumbs up just because she was in it in tight blue. But uh, you know the, the 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 original cast from the the first two movies, they had good chemistry. It was the same kind of chemistry that they had in the comic books and the cartoons. And yeah, the movie was kind of lame and everything, but they captured that chemistry, I think, very, very well in that movie. Um, and like I said, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Jessica Alba. I thought the guy playing Reed Richards in the original one was really good. And I thought that Chris Evans did a really good job. Chris Evans, when he first started out doing that um, and doing uh, Sunshine and stuff like that, he, was, he played a really good cocky little shit. And he was the perfect kind of cocky for Johnny Storm. So I I kind of liked that movie. I, I didn't I didn't see Silver Surfer, and I probably should. So I liked the the original Fantastic Four for what it is, and I and I'm ex I was excited when I first uh, heard about this movie coming out because I was sitting there thinking, you know, they're gonna reboot it, and you know maybe it won't be awful. Maybe it'll be a really cool. Um, you know, take on it and everything, and maybe maybe they'll just be able to do it right this time, and and uh, you know, regardless of the naysayers and everything, I, I like Michael B. Jordan. I think he's I think he's a pretty pretty good up and coming actor, and I really, I mean, one of the reasons why I was actually really kind of excited about this movie was because I enjoyed Chronicle thoroughly. I really liked Chronicle, and so um, that gave me a little bit of hope for this movie, a little bit, a little bit. So here are the 10 things that I think sucked about Fantastic Four 2015. Not starring Jessica Alba. And caution, there might be a little bit of spoilers in here. Toasty! So, uh, Reed Richards and Ben Grimm are at the science fair and they're doing this and they have, uh, you know, the um, uh, transporter, I guess you could say, at the uh, the science fair and everything. And, and they they almost blow up the whole school and everything like that. And then the, the, the teacher comes over, he's like, that's not science. And it's like, dude, even if it wouldn't have done what it would have done and that blue light would have come up and stuff like that, it would have been like, hey, you made light. <laughs> You're golden, bro. But no, uh, all of a sudden, you know, they're there and this, this scientist and his daughter, his genius daughter, just happened to be trolling this high school science fair. Where the hell do they come from? Why are they trolling the high school science fair? Like seriously, are they so hard up and they're they've hit such a wall that they're like, well, we haven't really uh, met anybody from Harvard or Stanford or anywhere, so we might as well go to a high school science fair and see what we can find, young Susan. No, man, what? What? Toasty. At times when there's actual like 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 physical artist music in the uh, in the movie and not just like soundtrack score it was very distracting and awful like there was the uh, the semi fast and the furious car scene with uh, with uh, Johnny Storm and the music behind it was just terrible and I'm like just sitting there kind of thinking to myself whoever the composer is for this or whoever edited the sound for this or whoever I, I would have you know okay this is good, man, but th this scene right here, come on, dude, really? What the hell is that music? What is that music? I mean, what, was that was that playing in the car, or did you add that later? Like, it was just, it's terrible, man. And that is honestly not something that I think that anybody in their right mind would listen to in a car, in like a car drag racing sequence. Toasty! Usually when you meet uh, villains, you know, before they become villains, you like them, sort of. There's that little bit of you that kind of likes them. You know, look at Jack Nicholson as, as, as uh, 
uh, Jack Napier in the original Batman 89. You know, look at even Jim Carrey as before he became the Riddler and stuff. But, you know, you see all these bad people and and you you kind of like them before you know they have some sort of a redeeming quality in some way you kind of like them but doom was just just an asshole for the sake of being an asshole he was just evil for the sake of being evil there was no reason why he was mad they never really glanced upon that at all they never touched upon that and it was just he was just evil for the sake of evil and he was just a douchebag from the word go and so it was just kind of like, okay, so you're the quintessential, typical, stable, bad guy. Okay, bro. Toasty! What exactly is Johnny Storm doing at the lab? You know, he gets in trouble for drag racing and by the cops, and then he gets in trouble by Daddy, and Daddy threatens to cut him off if he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't come with him right now. And and you're going to come and work for me now, is what he says. And, and all of a sudden he's just like, okay. And he just goes, and all of a sudden he's just typing on a computer. And, and, and really? I mean, what if he never got in the drag race and never got in trouble by the law? Did they really need him? What was he doing there? And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, it worked. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, what are you typing? There's nothing. It worked. Everybody's cheering and you're typing. What are you doing? doing dude he didn't need to be there at all there was no purpose for him to be there other than just to appease daddy and so it's like what are you doing there bro you, you don't you, what Toasty. you ever look at your phone and you're typing something or you're doing something on your smartphone then you realize how fucking stupid your smartphone actually is and you're just like stupid fucking smartphone that's how i felt with this movie stupid fucking smart people it reminds me, honestly, of there's a Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode out there called Space Mutiny, where all these guys are sitting around the table and they all of a sudden they just like, one word pops up and they all just mutinize right there. And then it's just like, and, they, and you hear, I think it's Tom Servo say, easily led wise counsel. And that's how I kind of felt like in this movie is that, you know, these guys, they, they were just very naive and easily led and easily led into, into the danger and the stupidity. And it's like, Doom would say something like, oh, okay let's do it let's fuck get it right now let's go yeah i'm not smart or anything you know i didn't invent this thing or anything so you know obviously my iq doesn't have anything to do with the fact that i don't know right from fucking wrong and bad idea versus good idea but i know how to put a fucking socket in this thing and it's just stupid it's just like everybody's just like all of a sudden it's like hey um i was thinking about maybe uh doing something stupid right now and they're just like oh okay cool let's do something stupid that sounds good that sounds really good that's just kind of how the whole movie was. It was just a series of stupid events. Toasty! I don't mean to play any sort of a race thing here. I'm not talking any sort of a race thing here. Like I said, I, I like Michael B. Jordan as an actor. He's a great actor. Whether or not he was good for Johnny Storm, just the role itself, whether or not the, the role was originally a white guy or not, um, I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, you know, there was that moment where they're down, well, they're on the new planet, they go to the alternate planet and everything, and they're all sitting there and like, we have to go down. We have to go towards it all. We have to go towards that glowing thing that we don't know what it is, and we don't know if it's going to hurt anybody or not. And we're supposed to just come here, plant our flag, and go back. But no, we're going to go off here and go do this. And Michael P. Jordan's like, <laughs> I'm going to stay here, bro. No, no, no. I'm going to stay here. And honestly, it reminded me a lot of uh, the original Kings of Comedy, Cedric the Entertainer. That's what it reminded me of, and it was just, it was really, really funny that there's just like, we're just gonna go right over here, and he's just like, look at that, man, I ain't going nowhere, and it's, it was funny, but it was still just kind of fucking stupid. Toasty. Johnny Storm is, you know, the cocky one, you know, it, well, you know, him and Ben kind of go off on each other as, as being, who can be the cocky one and everything, and that's in the comics, uh, but this one, it, Johnny Storm was cocky, but in my eyes, he was the wrong kind of cocky. He was, you know, Johnny Storm in the original, he was a jokester. You know, he, he was the, the class clown, kind of. Th this guy wasn't the class clown. He was just like, I'm just so cool. 
and I'm just cool to be cool, man. I'm too cool for school, and I'm just going to do what I want, and I don't give a fuck about anything. And he was like the rebel and stuff, and that's not... I mean, Johnny Storm was a rebel, but at the same time, he was... He was... It, it was... It was the wrong kind of cocky. And Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm, you know, I, I didn't have any reservations about it at all, really. Uh, you know, when it came out, you know, the news that he was going to be Johnny Storm and everything like that. I'm not, a, I'm not a racist asshole. I don't care if you want to put a black guy in for a white guy. I don't care about that at all. Uh, you know, I can understand why some people kind of... Don't deem it offensive that he's, you know, like that they cast a black guy in a white guy's role or anything like that. You know, but I can understand how some redneck asshole comic book lovers could see that like that. You know, because imagine like if they recasted, if, if they rebooted Shaft starring Tom Cruise. There would be some discussion about that. You know, or if they, you know, if they, if they rebooted Superfly starring Zac Efron, there's going to be some conversating about that. So, you know, you just kind of have to look at it like that. So I can understand why some people will be upset about Michael B. Jordan uh, getting that role. But, you know, it, you know, the whole spinoff with them being, you know, the, the foster siblings and everything, that was the only thing in my head was like, okay, but it was very easily, I was easily able to get over it because I was able, easily like, okay, well, isn't he supposed to be Sue Storm's brother? Well, I guess then there's going to be an adoption arc to it. And then there was. And so, you know, problem solved in my eyes. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think he did, I think he did a good job for what he was handed, but I just think that Johnny Storm was wrong. I don't think that Michael B. Jordan was wrong for Johnny Storm. I just think that Johnny Storm in general was wrong. So, good job, Michael B. Jordan. I still like you. Toasty! The douchebag in the Iron Mask. And no, not Leo DiCaprio in that awesome movie back in the day. That movie was kind of cool. The Man in the Iron Mask. You ever see that? That was a good movie. You know, just the whole uh, Three Musketeers, Four Musketeers uh, kind of thing. And and the casting in that movie was really good. But anyways, uh, the the douchebag in the Iron Mask, a.k.a. Doctor Doom. I guess, you know, they spent so much time on Origins and stuff like that, but they still just didn't really get to the whole reason why Doom was so salty in the beginning. Like, he, he was just like an asshat from, you know, the word go in the movie. So I just don't get it. I, you know, they didn't explain really why he was such a big douchebag and such a big asshole and everything like that. I mean, you know, that it was just kind of like, you know, like I said, from the word go, he was just, he was bad and he was bad news. And that's just, okay, well, this is your bad guy. Like I said earlier, it's just the quintessential bad guy. Toasty! The movie had too long for the origin story. Like, seriously. It was like 45 minutes before they even got their powers before the accident even happened it was 45 minutes into the movie and then it was another 10 minutes before you even really get to see any live action stuff and that was one of the cool things that I liked about it that I, I liked kind of the you know when they get into the accident up until it says you know one year later uh, basically there's this scene in there where Reed Richards wakes up and he's all stretched out on this gurney and he, he's all groggy and stuff like that, but he's stretched, you know, and this is the first time you see him as, you know, Mr. Fantastic, you know, with the stretching capability. And I thought that was kind of cool that he kind of woke up and he was just, you know, like, what the fuck? And, and then he swarmed his, squirmed his way out of it and everything and then went crawling through the vents and, and, uh, and you see, you know, Ben Grimm in there as the thing and, and, and just like, you know, Johnny, don't leave, or, uh, you know, Reed, don't leave me, and everything, and it, that was a really cool scene, you know, like I've said before, I can find cool things in shitty movies, and that was, that was kind of a cool thing when they first initially kind of woke up and kind of realized what was going on, and, and, you know, Michael B. Jordan's just, like, laying on the table just on fire, and his dad's just, like, watching his son burn in front of him, not knowing what, really, what's going on and stuff, and, uh, the Invisible Woman, as you can turn invisible. Okay. Is that all you can do? <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was kind of a cool thing, but in my eyes, the, the origin story was just too long for the movie. But honestly, I mean, even after the whole 45-minute origin story, you still don't know a lot about these people. You know, there's, you still really don't care about them at all. And, 
and so I just think it was kind of a waste of all that time and I think they could have just had like a flashback sequence at the very beginning of the movie during the credits even of what happened to them and what happened to Doom and and everything and I mean it was just so long and so I it's and that leads me up into my next point Toasty. The movie was, I, I don't want to say that, you know, I, I wish I could have seen a three hour version of it, but if they did release something like that, I would definitely watch it because I just think that they crammed so much into the origins and everything. And then at the end, all of a sudden it was just like, hurry up and have a bad guy and hurry up and let's, let's fight and show some powers and then we're done. And it was, it was very abrupt at the end. It's like, oh, okay, here we go. Well, here's the, you know, they have to battle this dude and everything, and, and, and it was just, it was very, very, it, it was very, very long, but at the same time didn't, didn't fulfill me as much as it could have, and I think I would have liked to have seen more between the Origins shit and the whole, the, the lead up to the battle with Doom, and the battle with Doom was really, really weak, and I just thought that, you know, I, I was hoping for at least some really kick-ass fight scenes. And it really they just really didn't deliver that at all, even. Um, you know, because, like, even Terminator Genesis, there was, you know, there was some cool Terminator beatdowns and stuff that were kind of cool to watch. But with this one, it was just, there, there was really nothing great about it. And it was just a very dull take on a really cool story. Uh, or a really cool, you know, you know, comic book, but I just think honestly they could have done it with the same actors, and they could have done it the same way, but I think they should have hopped on uh, the t television series train. They should have hopped on that train with this movie and they should have made it into a series and that way they could have explored a little bit more for us and they could have shown a little bit more and 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 given us a little bit more as fans uh, but still I still don't think that the movie had the same chemistry and humor between the characters that I would, I would like to have seen and that's why I think that stretching it out a little bit it would have made us uh, it would have given them the opportunity to explore that aspect of it too because that was one of my favorite aspects of it was you know the fact that Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm just like hated each other and they were always like just just giving each other shit and and that was always really cool and and you know that that's one of the things that I liked about about the uh, the Jessica Alba Fantastic Four, besides the fact that Jessica Alba's hot little cute ass was in it, but was the fact that I I, I think that they captured the chemistry very well. And in this movie, they they didn't capture that chemistry whatsoever. There wasn't that love between uh, between Reed Richards and Sue. There wasn't the the anti love between uh, the Thing and the Human Torch. And I I just I miss that. And I think that if they would have if they would have taken this and put it into a series we would have seen something spectacular and they could have done the same thing with the same people but stretched it out and given us a little bit more so you know they hell i mean you know the first two episodes could have uh, could have cleared out the origins and then they would have had you know 10 more episodes they could have done you know to you know leading up to the battle with doom and then they could have done the doom battle really really well because i'm sure that they were pressed for time and shit with the whole origin story so i just think that they should have done a tv series out of it and they should have daredevil arrowed gotham flashed it up because those shows are doing great and so I think that, you know, Netflix and stuff like that, that's the future. Honestly, the, mo the movie theater is going to be a thing of the past. It's, it's a, an endangered species right now, and, and Netflix is the, uh, is the dominant. So it's, you know, they have, you know, they have to realize that, and I think that they could have done something cool with that. So, you know, I have to give this movie a very, very sad, very, very sad two out of five tube thumbs up. It was not terrible. I think it had a lot of potential. And I think it still does have a lot of potential if they were to expand it a little bit more, like I said, into maybe a, even a TV series after this and, and, and give us a little bit more of those characters. Um, you know, so I'm going to give it, you know, like I said, a really sad two out of five tube thumbs up. You know, it wasn't as bad as Terminator Genesis. So, you know, uh, hey, good job for that. But, I mean, that's not really an accomplishment. But, you know... I, I like the Fantastic Four. I, I still have high hopes for the Fantastic Four. 
So, you know, hopefully the future of the Fantastic Four isn't dead after this movie, and I hope that they can find some way to save it for me and for my dad and people like us that actually, you know, grew up loving the Fantastic Four. So, thanks for tuning in. My name's Tubes once again. Please check me out on Completely Unoriginal. It's a podcast that we do out of dakotabroadcasting.com in Aberdeen, South Dakota. A couple really good guys named Adam St. Paul and Kurt Campbell, and there's a link in the description below for that. Be sure to check me out this coming Thursday, uh, August 13th, 2015. I'm going to be emceeing the uh, music, the 18th annual Musicians Reunion going out at the uh, the Brown County Fair in Aberdeen, South Dakota, and it's going to be really good. I, I'm putting the whole thing on, and there's going to be some really special stuff going on that night, and uh, a lot of old friends getting back together after 20-some years of not playing together, musicians getting back together and playing. It's going to be a really, really good time, and there's a special surprise uh, around sundown. But that starts at 6 uh, with a band from Redfield here called Terror We Fall. And uh, they are going to open up, you know, give about 45 minutes to an hour open. And uh, and then uh, the older guys will get up and, and start jamming on that good time rock and roll and stuff. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So come and check me out there. It goes from 6 to 1 o'clock in the morning, 6 p.m. to 1 o'clock in the morning. It's great food, great tunes. It's probably the cheapest food you'll find at the fair. And they have really, really good food out there, too. So it's really good times. Also check me out uh, August 29th, Saturday, uh, at the Chroma Festival. I'm going to be doing some stand-up there from 4 to 5 at the uh, Campfire Stage. And so, yeah, come and check me out there and be doing some stand-up. Uh, and that's at Richmond Lake in the northeastern South Dakota region by Aberdeen. And, uh, yeah, a couple days of uh, good tunes and good people and lots of crazy hippies running around doing crazy hippie shit. And I'm going to try to write some crazy hippie jokes for it. So, um, you guys have a good one. Thank you very much for watching Tube Review. Once again, this is the Tube Review of Fantastic Four 2015, not starring Jessica Alba. But thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, do all that stuff. And I'll see you guys next week with uh, Avengers Age of Ultron tube review.